For Krema Media's policy, I'm Sane Lameni. Joining me today is Kole Swandunene Ngema to discuss her memoir titled Heart of a Strong Woman, From Davidson to Sarafina, My Story of Triumph. So Kole for the benefit of our viewers, can you tell us who is Kole Swandunene Ngema and what is this book about? Thank you for your question. Kole uh, is, I grew up in Davidson. Uh, it's in the East Range Township. Uh, I went to school, M. Tata, St. John's College, and then went to the UKZN, the University of Natal. But currently, I'm the CEO of the Jobek City Theatres, uh, which encompasses each of a theatre, so it's a theatre and Rodebo theatre. I'm a mother and a grandmother. So, yeah, that's a call you in a, in a nutshell, both personal and professional. Uh, you were married to a well-known artist, if I may say, Mbongen Ngema. Can you tell us how you met him? I met Mbongen Tata. He was doing Imama in the Lord, Ga Gibson Kente, and um, I was 18. So I met him when I was 17, and again, I met him when I was 18. Uh, yeah, we met him Tata. I met him in Grandstam again, and then in Davidson later in 1980. When I was 18, I've just finished my trick. I met him on the dusty street of Davidson and yeah, a relationship ensued after meeting him that time. But he kept telling me, he, he, he kept proposing love throughout throughout that journey of Umtata to, to Davidson. He was 20, he was 26 at that time. So oh, Gibson kind of gave you a chance to act in, in a stage play, but it didn't go the way he planned it for you. Can you tell us about that stage fright? Okay, no, 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 let me correct you. It was not to Gibson Kente who gave me an opportunity. It was our youth development director who lived up our street, who did shows that looked like Gibson Kente shows. So I was nine, ten when he gave me that opportunity because I've been rehearsing and watching other people do, do stage acts and all of that. And I really got a stage right when I was pushed to the audience because no one said the hall will be full because when you rehearse, the hall is empty. But when I was thrust into, into front stage and the hall was packed with men and women and children, I got to stage fright. And after that, I decided I'm not a person for, for, front, for, for the front. Even the director suggested that I become a money person from the age of 10 up until today. I just make sure that funding is there, the necessary resources are there to make a show happen. And in the book, you are trying to address the issue of polygamy. Can you tell us how you view this type of arrangement? You know what? I grew up in a, in a, in a small family, mother, father, a very uh, nuclear family without uh, any polygamy. Even in my neighborhood, I, I never saw or, yes, encountered a, a polygamous arrangement. And then there I was at 18 going to Zululand to meet Mbongeni's family, and there I was thrust into, um, yeah, this polygamous uh, arrangements. Umkulu, Umkulu Aike was married to four wives, the father had two, and at that time Mbongeni said, yeah, he's not interested in polygamy, but it turned out differently. And the aunts, some of the aunts, and in the neighborhood, in the village, people, yeah, you know, there were those polygamous uh, relationships. And for me, polygamy is really, it's a, it's a man's invention or a cultural invention whereby women are really, it's, it, it's, it's an, for me, it is an oppressed, an oppressive uh, system because you are four, there's one man, you have to take turns to be, to be with him. He's the one who's enjoying, you, you are supposed to be in the kitchen, barefoot and, 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 and pregnant, people would say, uh, just making sure that the household, the, the household uh, functions. So. For me, it, it, it just became a very difficult in, in, in arrangement and I refused to be part of it. And there is a part in the book where you had to stop your husband, again, Mr. Ngema, from getting married in Deben, but at the time you were in Joburg. Can you tell us about that? Okay, what happened was Umbongen invited me to come to New York to, 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 to visit. But I first went to Paris to see cast, and then I flew to New York. He flew me first class, and I had no idea what that entailed. When I got to New York, he took me to Bright Hughes house, which was upstate New York, and he proposed a different arrangement, whereby he asked if he could take Kulele as a second wife, and I said no. 
I can't be in a polygamous um, marriage. But he said, he said to himself, because he, he has indicated his wishes to me, whether I be or not, he went ahead. But I said to him when I realized that he had paid Lobola and he was going ahead with Lelit's um, um, arrangement, marriage in a way, I said to him, it would be better if we get a divorce first so that he can marry her in a civil, in a civil marriage. Because you can't do that. When you do that, it becomes bigamy in this country. Unless if you take a wife in a, tradi in a traditional, uh, if you do a traditional marriage, but you wanted to marry her civil, in a civil marriage. So I had to stop that wedding because it was going to be an embarrassment for everyone, for him, for me, for, 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 for everyone. So what I did, other than to go to Devon and stop the wedding, I got the, the lawyers, my lawyers in Pretoria, to actually write a letter to the resident priest to give to the presiding priest it, mm -hmm. to, stop, to stop the wedding. It was a big embarrassment for everyone, for him, for me, for Uleleti, and for those who were hosting, Anand Singh was there, Whoopi Goldberg was there, Miriam Makeba, Hugh Masikela. It was the press, the press, the, the national press was there. So it was a big embarrassment for, for everyone. But I did not want him to get married whilst he was married to me. I did suggest a divorce and he refused at that point in time. Hence, I had to stop, had to stop the wedding. Mm. And you have traveled the world with uh, Sarafina and you've won awards with Mbongeni Ngema. Those were the days, and I'm sure you must have had a few highlights that you will never forget about that time in your career. Can you share some of those highlights? You know what, when you, when you, when you get to understand Mbongeni, you understand the genius. He's, he is a creative genius. He is gifted. How he would just have a concept, an idea, to say, this is what I want to do, uh, this is the idea that I have. It becomes a concept. From a concept to a production on stage, it is really amazing to watch that. He would create, he enjoys, he, he, then he, he would start with the music, but he would have the story in his head to say, this is the story I, this is the story I want. But in order to get to the story, let's start with the music and we'll do the dances. And then it gets to the dialogue and, and, and the script. To watch that and the fact that he would bring other experts like Kuba Bundaba when he was creating Isarafin and bring top-notch band and then train the cast. I mean, they would, they would warm up in the morning maybe for two hours and then warm up, warm up the bodies, warm up the voices and then get into, into, into proper rehearsal. It was just beautiful, creative, creative work. And to see that and see that on stage became, became for me, because I, I know from him saying, I want to do this, to see that on stage and then looking at the awards that Isarafina won and the reviews, the reviews, you don't sleep, you do the show and then you wait until early hours of the morning to see what the re review is like. And if it is a glowing review, it is celebration all over. And to go to Tony Awards and other awards and to see top stars in the world, because Sarafina was seen by almost all the stars from Whoop, uh, Whoopi was Whoopi Goldberg, and then you had all the stars uh, who wrote a uh, color purple. Um, Alice, you had Alice Walkers, you had the Quincy Jones coming to see the shows, you have Oprah Winfrey coming to see the show, the show. So top stars coming to see the show was just amazing, not just in the U US, including prime ministers and, and you know, um, what do you call them? Politicians coming to see the top politicians in the world coming to see the show was really, really, really an eye opener. And those are the lessons and things that I take, I take with me. For, 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 for forever and traveling and traveling and seeing different countries and going to different museums and seeing different shows beautiful beautiful stuff that yeah that I'll never ever 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 forget and while while I was reading this book and I thought of our country at this stage uh, we are dealing with a lot of issue uh, based on gender-based violence which has prompted even our government to allocate money to fight this sketch how were you able to deal with that terrible ordeal and how would you advise women who are in the same situation? You know, what is, what is key is when you are in that situation, the minute a person lays a hand, especially the hand, because abuse is in different ways. You have, you have the verbal abuse and at times we are able as women to stomach that. And then there's the 
pushing, which is physical, but it is not the beating. There's the pushing, the, the, the pushing, the physical, the physical, and then there's the beatings. Once that starts, including sexual abuse, a woman must leave. If he does it for the first time and you don't leave, you're giving that person a license to actually abuse you. He will do it the second time, he will do it the third time, and then the 20th time, and you might end up leaving your home in a, in a, in a coffin. So what government is doing, setting resources aside, it is a sketch, and it is a sketch that has been, I, I, I think, accelerated by the lockdown, because during the lockdown, you've seen so many women and young children being killed, being killed by their parents or by, by spouses. So there is a need to talk, there is a need to break the silence. And what I've done for, for myself after 30 years really was to break the silence, to say it, it happens, it happens not in just the township, it happens behind closed doors of these estates, beautiful estates, people driving beautiful cars and behind the scenes. It, 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 it abuse doesn't have class, doesn't have color, doesn't have race, doesn't have age. It happens, it, it happens across the spectrum. And it is a problem within South Africa that needs to be attended to urgently, for, for, uh, if I may say. Mm -hmm. And would you say writing this book and writing about your, your ordeal has helped you to heal? It is, part, it, is part, it is part of healing. You know, when you think you have healed, because remember, I'm writing it 30 years later. You think after 30 years, everything is hunky-dory. I am fine. Then you sit with Fred, who says to you, what, what happened? And then you relive the nonsense. You go, you go back to it. And you realize how traumatic, how traumatic those, 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 times, those times were. And to relive that, it is very difficult, but necessary, by the way. It is necessary to relive in order for you to heal 100%. So yes, it is, it is a healing period. And, but it, it was also cathartic to be able to talk to somebody I don't even know because I've n I didn't know Fred from above. So, but to be able to talk to Fred and put it in writing, really, really cathartic. And I hope I'll be able to help other women in similar situations, not just in South Africa, uh, worldwide to say, you have to leave. You can't, you can't stay. Otherwise, you live in a coffin if you, stay, if you stay longer. And lastly, if someone were to ask as to why they should read this book, what would you say? You know, uh, it's, an universal, it's a universal story. But key for South Africans, it's a local, it's a local story. When we talk about something happening in Fortsburg, you are able to, in your imagination, you know what Fortsburg looks like. Oriental Plaza. When you talk about the Methodist Church in Durban, you understand where it is not far from the playhouse. Oh, that's where the church, that's where the church was. Davidson, my, 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 my home boys and girls are saying, oh, you've put us on the map because when I say Biela Street or whatever street, they know exactly what I'm talking, what I'm talking about. The key is the message that comes out of, uh, out of the book. It is how theater was made because that you can't take away from Bongen. It is how theater was made, that beautiful part. That's why I keep saying it is, three sides in a way. You have the good, you have the bad, you have the ugly. So the good must come out and the bad must come out and the ugly must come out. But it is beautifully written as well. What is key is that it is beautifully written. Ufred is a wordsmith. He takes you to different places. And for me, it's, it's because it's a local story that I'm encouraging people to read and women to actually read and, and understand where I came from and other women who are in similar situations during, during the productions to say, you need to break, we need to break the silence. Otherwise, we we protecting perpetrators forever. And they continue to do the nonsense. The minute you protect, they continue to do the nonsense, which is really, really, really unfortunate. That was Oliswan Duneningema in conversation with Polity about her memoir titled Heart of a Strong Woman from Davidson to Sarafina, My Story of Triumph.